while listening to a patient's heart with a stethoscope positioned over the second intercostal space immediately adjacent to the sternum, you hear an abnormal heart sound. Where do you suspect a defect? And this is going to be where you would listen for the pulmonary valve. The pulmonary valve, so this is part of auscultation, uh, along with lungs and heart. We're wanting to think of the auscultation sites. This is going to be high yield material for the board, so please uh, make sure that you spend some time with it. When auscultating, it's important to know your stethoscope. The diaphragm is better for detecting higher pitched sounds, such as S1 or S2, the murmurs of aortic and mitral regurgitation, and pericardial friction rubs. The bell is more sensitive to low pitched sounds, such as S3 or S4, and the murmur of mitral stenosis. When auscultating the heart, remember to correlate your findings with the patient's jugular venous pressure and carotid pulse. You will listen for S1 and S2 in each of the six listening areas. In the aortic area, in the right second interspace close to the sternum. In the pulmonic area, in the left second interspace close to the sternum. In the left third interspace. In the tricuspid area, in the left fourth and left fifth interspaces. And in the mitral area at the apex. The auscultation sequence will start with the diaphragm of the stethoscope and progress from the base of the heart, moving from the right second interspace to the left second interspace and down the left sternal border to the apex. Then with the bell of the stethoscope, we will listen along the lower left sternal border in the left fourth and fifth interspaces. Then we will listen at the apex. Adjust your stethoscope so that you'll be listening through the diaphragm. Begin listening in the aortic area at the right second interspace close to the sternum. Starting in the right second interspace helps orient you to the cardiac cycle. Note the cardiac rate and rhythm. Normally, the rate is 60 to 100 beats per minute, and the rhythm is regular. Identify S1 and S2, and listen for extra heart sounds and murmurs. Murmurs are covered in greater detail later in this video. In the aortic area, and also in the pulmonic area, S2 is usually louder than S1. Still listening in the aortic area, but focusing more in the pulmonic area, try to identify the inspiratory splitting of S2 into its two components. Its first component, A2, is from left-sided aortic valve closure. Its second component, P2, comes from right-sided pulmonic valve closure. Now breathe deeply. This physiologic split of S2A and S2P normally occurs during inspiration. During expiration, however, these two components are fused into a single sound, S2. Let's listen again. S2 usually diminishes in intensity while S1 becomes louder as you proceed down through the third interspace and into the tricuspid area. Listen at the apex. Here at the mitral area, S1 is usually louder than S2. Now switch to the bell of the stethoscope. 
Listen next along the lower left sternal border in the left fourth and fifth interspaces. Then listen at the apex. To improve your ability to hear S3, S4, and the murmur of mitral stenosis, place the patient in the left lateral decubitus position. Have the patient roll part way onto his left side. Now tip onto your left side. This brings the left ventricle closer to the chest wall and makes low pitched sounds more audible. Then recheck the position of the apical impulse and place the bell lightly over that location. If the patient had an audible S3, it would sound like this. Now notice how the third heart sound disappears when the bell is placed more firmly on the chest wall. Listen again with light pressure, with firm pressure, and once again with light pressure. 